scientists deeply care. We, we care a lot about the way that the information that we're generating is used and the communities that are on the front lines of the kinds of impacts that climate change comes with. So I'm, you know, if it, if it means that I have to come forward as a real person, like, so be it. I'm a real person. 2014 came in as the warmest year on record, not by much, and at the same time this uh, very large, one of the top three uh, in terms of intensity, El Ninos developed, a super El Nino developed, and we expected that that would uh, bring a spike in the global mean surface temperature, and indeed it has. But the warmest 12 months on record is probably the period from about uh, October of 2015 to October 2016. So the last big El Nino is 1998, um, and so if you compare the El Nino we just had to the El Nino in 1998, the globe is much warmer now. And so what that tells us is that the extreme warmth that we're experiencing today is not just due to El Nino, it's due to El Nino plus this long-term warming trend uh, that we're experiencing. The global mean surface temperature is not a monotonic, a regular increase, but rather it's a series of steps. And we've gone up another step, and we're not going to go back down again. The very warm Arctic in the early fall is causing the jet stream to take a wavier path. This is something we've been studying for a while. And those bigger swings in the jet stream are transporting more heat and moisture up into the Arctic. Some people say that they're going to turn off the satellites that are monitoring the uh, climate. I remember back in 1978, I proposed a Landsat satellite for California. They called me Governor Moonbeam because of that. I didn't get that moniker for nothing. And if Trump turns off the satellites, California will launch its own damn satellite. We're going to collect that data. All this hype in the media about we're post-fact or we're beyond facts, um, I think is a bunch of bull. Uh, there's some social media, new media that are making things up, and I can't deny that. But certainly, um, the world isn't going to move forward successfully without being informed by science and facts. Well, the Larsen C is the next uh, big ice shelf which is supposed to go, right? Uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, Larsen C, some, uh, some big calving events coming up. How long it's going to take to get there, I, 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 I truly don't know. Um, but we seem, we seem to have an evolution in that direction right now of the last and sea ice shelf. The way you should kind of think of an ice sheet is it's like a big boulder sitting at the top of a hill. Once it starts to go down that hill, it's really hard to stop it. And so what we're really interested in is trying to figure out how close we are to pushing that boulder over the edge. This is a frightening moment. We have seen in the last few weeks how the reins of the federal government are being handed over to the fossil fuel industry. We are looking at the creation of an American oligarchy run by the very people who have created the situation that is now threatening our own health, our own well-being, and our own prosperity. It's been a very tough year for me personally, uh, having scuba dived on the reef in the far reaches of the tropical Pacific and watching 85% of that reef uh, die between one of my trips and the next over six months. And you look at the full record, they show very strong evidence of human effects on climate. They show this warming of the lower atmosphere, the troposphere, and cooling of the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere. And that pattern, that distinctive pattern, warming low down, cooling up high, is fundamentally inconsistent with natural causes. Because the bottom line is, we don't want to be here. None of us want to be here. We want to be in our labs, we want to be in the field, we want to be with our students, we want to be doing the work that we were trained and educated and raised to do, which is science. It's the work of understanding the natural world, understanding how this beautiful, amazing, and complicated world works, and using that information to make the world a better place for all of us, to make it safe, and to protect the natural environment that God or creation or the universe gave us. That's what we want to do, but we are at a moment in time, a moment in history, where we have to do something else as well. And that's stand up and be counted.